Hi Elizabeth, we have your 1983 380SL here at the shop and I just wanted to show you the things that we discovered with your car. And uh, as I get in the car, I just want to point out to you that um, this radio uh, does not work. You had wanted us to check out why this radio doesn't work. We had um, replaced the fuse on the back of the radio and uh, after replacing the fuse, the fuse continued to blow. blow so. Um, we, we, we've determined that the, the radio itself is shorted and it should be replaced. Um, we can help you find another used unit if you want, um, but if you don't want to go with a, another Becker radio, you can put an aftermarket radio in here and it, w it will work it just as well. Um, the Becker units like these are still available. They're not that expensive. If you want a used one, we can help you locate one. The other thing is you had complained about the ashtray not working and uh, we had checked for power um, behind the ashtray. We pulled the ashtray out and uh, we check for power back over here at the power point and there is power to this point so what's what's wrong with it is, is, is that the used ashtray itself is no good and it should be replaced um, we should try and find you another used unit and that'll that'll help you save some money these new ashtrays are very expensive they're about four hundred eighty eight dollars for, for a new one and we can help you find a used one for a lot less uh... the other thing i want to point out to you is that you had been complaining that the window doesn't work and uh, when I try the window out, when I roll it down, it is working. So um, it's the window itself is, is working fine. Right now the window switch is fine. So I think you have a bad intermittent window switch. Um, these window switches, uh, they typically can be, you know, the contacts can be cleaned and we can put them back on. But, you know, since the window switch is all faded and, and the cover itself is all messed up, I would just recommend putting a new window switch on. Uh, these window switches are also expensive, but I can get you a, a, a decent deal on a new one. So let me know if you want me to put this new window switch in. But if it's working intermittently, I would suggest starting with the window switch first. Right now the window's going up and down perfect. Uh, let's go over some other things that we found wrong with the car that you were asking us to check out. Okay, we have the car up on the rack, and you had brought it in because you were complaining that the engine was running rough. So I'm under the car right now on the driver's side. Uh, of the car and um, underneath the car and I just wanted to point out to you that this motor mount right here um, the motor mount is right where this green light is and this motor mount is, is collapsed and it's it's touching the motor mount um, uh, engine bracket so when it's this low it'll cause the engine to vibrate and resonate through the chassis of the car so we're going to suggest that you change both the left and the right side motor mounts and this is why the reason why the car is running rough or it feels like it's running rough so replace both the left and the right side motor mounts and you'll get rid of that vibration that you're complaining about the next thing I'm going to show you is that the the brakes are, are really low in the front um, they're almost finished this is the brake pad wear plate and when the brake pads touch the wear plate um, it's an indication that the brake pads are finished uh, we're going to recommend that you do the front brake pads um, in addition to front brake pads being low, you're going to also need the brake rotors. They have a, a sharp edge on them, and, and it, that's, that, that indicates how much wear has been, has been done on this brake disc. There's a huge edge on it right here, and you know this, this pin should be able to pass over the rotor, but the, the edge won't allow it because the, uh, the minimum spec requirement for these rotors has, has, has been exceeded. So you need to replace the front brake discs and front brake pads. Um, the light should have come on for the pads by now because the brake pad sensor is touching the brake rotor. So I would recommend that you do brake pads and brake rotors now while the car is here. I will give you an estimate to do this work. The other thing I want to point out to you is that the front suspension subframe mounts are starting to get low. And it's only a matter of time before they start to cause the front suspension to knock. This is what the subframe mount is. and. Um, you have one on the right side and you have one here on the on the left side and when these subframe mounts uh, get low they create a gap right in between the washer there and the subframe mount so you're, you have low subframe mounts and what will, this will happen is you'll hear a lot of rackety rack noises in the front suspension or knocking noises when you go over over bumps so if you start to hear that then I would suggest that you change these subframe mounts um, they are low and they're going to need to be replaced the other thing I want to show you on the car is that the uh, brake fluid is uh, really dirty. It should be an amber color and when it's a dark color like this it means that the brake fluid has lost its temperature protection and um, it, it, ha it gains moisture in it and that's why the yellow brake fluid turns starts to turn brown. 
So we recommend bleeding the brakes uh, as well uh, when you do the brake job on the car. So um, we, we recommend changing all, ch changing the and bleeding all four wheels, the brake fluid in all four wheels when we do the front brake pads and rotors. The other thing I want to point out to you is that when the car came in, this coolant reservoir right there, uh, it was really low on um, coolant. There was actually nothing in there. We put a gallon of water in there and then we pressure tested the cooling system to see where the coolant leak was coming from and we noticed that the water pump bypass hose which is right here this bypass hose is actually leaking coolant and it needs to be replaced uh, we tried tightening the hose clamps but it still seems to be leaking from there so we're going to recommend changing this water pump bypass hose and that should stop your coolant leak um, if you don't take care of this, it could cause a, you know, the engine to overheat and then you'll ruin your engine. So we recommend that you take care of this coolant leak as soon as possible. Um, we'll email you an estimate to do that. And the one final thing I want to point out to you on the car is that the uh, right front parking brake light has a crack in it. It's missing a piece and that should uh, be addressed as well. The next thing I, I want to point out to you is that these transmission cooler hoses, they're original, they've never been replaced, and they're starting to crack, and they're also starting to get very humid. So I'd recommend replacing these transmission cooler hoses. They have upgraded units now that have a, like a, 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 a braided wire that wrap around them so that if the fan belt were to break, these hoses wouldn't rupture. And it's important to upgrade these hoses. So uh, there's a, a right side transmission cooler hose and there's also a left side transmission cooler hose and they're both the same age and they're both original and they're both starting to crack and it's only a matter of time before they start to leak and they could, could break on you if a fan belt comes off. So uh, I will give you an estimate to do this work as well.